There's nothing left to fear. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for those horror movies that appear to take specific inspiration from or liberties with established genre hits. And now you're gonna pay for that. Number 10, The Cave versus The Descent. Maybe we should send in a second scout, just to be safe. No, come on, we gotta get in the water. What happens when two different people possess the same idea around the same time? Which one is ripping off the other? You know, I have done this before, you know. Well, both The Cave and The Descent were released in 2005. However, the former was released a month after the latter, meaning that The Cave was always going to live in the shadow, pun intended, of its forebear. Divergent Caves. Divergent Caves. Divergent Caves. <laughs> That isn't to say that The Cave is a bad movie, per se, since it also possesses a claustrophobic sense of dread and nightmarish creatures to boot. Yet, the sad reality of the matter is that most movie fans are more likely to know The Descent rather than The Cave. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? There's no breeze! It could be any one of these tunnels! Take your pick! Number 9. Demon Wind vs. Night of the Demons and the Evil Dead This kind of looks like your old girlfriend. <laughs> what makes this seem like a ripoff of Evil Dead? Maybe the demons, a dilapidated old house, and a couple of artifacts that are DEFINITELY not inspired by the Kandarian daggers in the 1981 horror classic. Demon Wind is a very strange horror hodgepodge, a cult video rental that's certainly not lacking in entertainment. I think we might just get out of this. Do you doubt it? The film adapts much of its story from the aforementioned Evil Dead, together with 1988's Night of the Demons for good measure. The special effects are wild, the acting amateurish, but not without charm, and Demon Wind is made all the better for it. Am I not beautiful? Number 8. The Silence vs. A Quiet Place 2018's A Quiet Place received positive attention placed towards its treatment of human drama amid the backdrop of a horrific, monstrous apocalypse. A year later, the Netflix film The Silence would do something similar, only they wouldn't forget to make their version violent and disturbing as fudge to boot. Yep, diehard horror fans might actually prefer to watch The Silence over A Quiet Place, particularly if a more reckless vibe is what's desired. Simply said, the silence goes for it in a manner that differentiates itself from a quiet place enough to earn it a spot on your watch list. <laughs> Number 7. Beyond the Door versus The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. Dimmi, why you do this to me? The Italian genre film cycles of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s made a killing on the copycat game, tackling every conceivable genre with aplomb and reckless abandon. Beyond the Door was one of that country's numerous rip-offs of The Exorcist, but it also enjoyed financial success when exported abroad. Who are you? <laughs> the film relentlessly toured the drive-in and grindhouse circuits, shocking audiences not only with its creepy possession scenes, but also its surprisingly funky soundtrack. Beyond the Door also tackles the satanic offspring plot thread of Rosemary's Baby to boot, making this something of a perfect storm in the realm of sleazy horror copycats. What have you done to it? Number 6. Mahakal vs. A Nightmare on Elm Street Italy isn't the only country to have taken inspiration from huge American horror franchises over the years. Maha Kal is perhaps one of the most infamous copycat flicks to come out of India, although the film's singing and dancing approach definitely distances itself from its source material, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Indeed, this 1993 Bollywood joint began production in the late 80s and looks every inch of the part. Shankar. There's a full Freddy Krueger-inspired bad guy here, as well as a comic relief character with a serious Michael Jackson fetish. Hey, Prakash, my friend, my man, I'll be out there. <laughs> Yet this film from the famed Ramsey Brothers also possesses some legitimately atmospheric lighting and set pieces amid all of the musical numbers. Mahakal is absolutely worth a watch. <laughs> Number 5. Intruder vs. Halloween Ah, can you take a joke? It may seem reductive to label 1989's Intruder as merely a clone of Halloween from 1978. 
After all, the simple fact that they're both slashers doesn't necessarily make them similar films. And in deference to Intruder, director Scott Spiegel utilizes the novel location of a grocery store for his film setting. Who's there? Intruder also had its origins in Night Crew, an earlier Super 8 work from Spiegel in which the killer had even more in common with Halloween. Intruder takes a variety of Halloween tropes and goes heavy on the practical gore effects. The end results are a messy and tense little slasher flick that's worth a look. Well, I think we have enough excitement for one night. Yeah. <laughs> Number 4. Inseminoid vs. Alien I think we ought to discuss the bonus situation. Right. Brett and I, we think we ought to... We deserve full shares, right, right baby? Ridley Scott's Alien wasn't the first science fiction horror film, but it arguably set a mighty high bar for success in its wake. Inseminoid was just one of the gory and disturbing interstellar horror released in a post-alien world. A British slash Hong Kong co-production with a memorable twist. Here, the aliens not only aren't friendly, they also want to procreate. As a result, Inseminoid delivers graphic content with an equally messy payoff, as poor Judy Geeson delivers a bloodthirsty alien offspring. It's honestly as gross as it sounds, made all the more uneasy by the film's bleak electronic score. Inseminoid goes there. <laughs> Number 3. Critters vs. Gremlins Has it got a name, Dad? Yeah, Mogwai. What? Mogwai. Every horror fan out there probably has their favorite post-Gremlins copycat film. Maybe you're a ghoulies gal, or maybe a hobgoblins kind of guy. For our money, however, there's just something special about 1986's Critters. For starters, their creature design is different enough from both the Mogwai and fully formed Gremlins to stand out from the pack. <laughs> Additionally, there's a wicked sense of humor that runs through all four canonical films, as well as the 2019 reboot, Critters Attack. The first Critters film possesses a great electronic score, complete with a memorable metal theme song, quick-moving action, and an atmosphere that's just scary enough for younger kids that are new to horror. It's highly recommended. Call me. Number 2. Zombie 2 vs. Dawn of the Dead We're thieves and we're bad guys, that's exactly what we are. We gotta find our own way. The aforementioned Italian genre film industry didn't just stop at copying established horror franchises. They also excelled in legally grey retitlings of movies in order to tenuously attach them to said franchises. Director Lucio Fucci was a respected maestro who was known as Italy's godfather of gore, and his 1979 film Zombie, aka Zombie Flesh Eaters, was also released under the title of Zombie 2. What do we do now? Well, I've got an idea, but uh, I'm gonna need your help. This was due to the fact that George Romero's Dawn of the Dead was issued in Italy under the title of, you guessed it, Zombie. The two films only possess a passing resemblance to each other in other respects, with Fucci's tropical setting, an infamous zombie vs. shark sequence, helping it stand on its own two rotting feet. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Piranha vs. Jaws What's your name again? I'm Chrissy! Where are we going? Swimming! The horror movie world is a much better place thanks to the copious amounts of copycat films released in the aftermath of 1975's Jaws. You want to see a giant bear attack? Check out Grizzly from 1976. A killer whale more your style? The 1977's Orca is for you. The world has changed. Even our gods dance to a new song. That said, there are few when animals attack films quite like Joe Dante's Piranha. This 1978 effort for producer Roger Corman brought with it Dante's trademark zaniness and penchant for self-referential humor. Of course, Piranha also contained plenty of gratuitous skin and violence, but what Dante did best was tie all of these exploitable elements together to make a fun movie. <laughs> Are
Are there any horror movie copycats you think are better than the original? Let us know in the comments. Happy Halloween, dear. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.